Uh, the chair would now like to address Mr. Blitzer. Um, this question is interesting. I'll have to edit it a little bit. You implied that Israel has the right to exist because of what happened to the Jews during World War II. Why in Palestine? Don't the Palestinians, too, have the right to a secure homeland? Why do they have to suffer and make way for the Jews? Look, we can go back and we can argue over the birth of Israel, the justice of the, the birth of Israel. We can argue over whether or not there should be an Israel. There is an Israel today. There's a strong Israel today, a vibrant Israel that is not going to disappear. Palestinians have missed opportunities. There is an opportunity today. I don't see any useful purpose in arguing over what justifications Israel has to exist. Israel has all of the justifications in the world to exist. And I don't even think it's, it's appropriate to question the reason why Israel exists. Thank God that there is at least one Israel, an Israel where Jews can live if they want to. They don't have to live there. But if they need refuge, if they want to live in a country that is a Jewish homeland, that's fine. And I think, as I said before, all of us should be delighted that we happen to be around at a time in this world when there is this Israel. Zionism is an ideology. It's the national liberation movement of the Jewish people. To deny Zionism, to reject Zionism, is about as racist an element as you can get. Why should all of these people, Palestinians and others, deserve a homeland if the Jews can't have a homeland? Have not the Jews suffered enough all of these years to have a homeland? Have not the Jews developed an identity, a culture, a religion? Sure, the Jews deserve a homeland. And there is an opportunity now to resolve all of these problems. It's not going to be an easy, there's no quick fix uh, solution, but it has, it has to involve compromise, recognition of mutual rights, but certainly, given the history of what's gone on over there, Anybody who ignores the security problems facing Israel, certainly the Israelis aren't, whether they're Likud or labor or whatever, certainly anyone who does ignore those very, very real security problems in the Middle East, a dangerous neighborhood, uh, they're going to be doomed to destruction. And I don't think that the Jews at this particular point in, in our history are prepared to accept that. I wonder if I can no. comment on that. Uh, no, I'm, I'm afraid you can't comment on that. I'm Why sorry, because I've got a question for... I've, I I've got to like, keep this. Let, me, let me just I add one point. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance a minute, Mr. Finkelstein, but I'm going to give you a question to work from, uh, that, uh, because I want to make sure as many people in the audience feel honored as like we can possibly manage. Uh, this writer says, the Intifada is not an isolated problem. This problem is affected by four wars, terrorism, and the Holocaust. Why is it not relevant, in your opinion, for Israel to be secure? Well, that nicely brings me back to the former question. I'll answer that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll answer both at the same time. <laughs> I, I suppose it, didn't, it wasn't missed on anyone in the audience that Mr. Blitzer was deploying that same familiar lawyer's tactic. The question that was put to him was, if we accept the, accept the legitimacy of the state of Israel, why don't we also accept the legitimacy of a Palestinian state? And then Mr. Blitzer went on to tell us all the good reasons why we should accept the legitimacy of the state of Israel, something which, by the way, I concur with. But that still doesn't answer the question. If one does accept the legitimacy of the state of Israel, why doesn't one also accord the same rights to self-determination and statehood to the Palestinians? That was the question, as I understand it, that was put to him. Now, the issue of security was raised, and somebody made, a, uh, I, I think, an inaccurate inference that I'm not concerned with the security of the state of Israel. I am. I'm also concerned about the security of a Palestinian state. Again, we have to apply the same standards across the board. Israel is ranked as the fourth leading military power in the world. Does it have real security claims against the Palestinians? Let me quote to you former foreign minister of Israel, Abba Eben. He said, Israel has as much to fear from a Palestinian state as the Soviet Union does from Luxembourg. <laughs> How many people here feel the Soviet Union has a real, th a real threat from Luxembourg? 
Furthermore, if we apply the logic of Abba Eben, the Soviet Union had more rights to occupy Afghanistan than Israel does to occupy the West Bank and Gaza, because certainly Afghanistan poses a greater security threat to the Soviet Union than Luxembourg. How many people here support the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan? Now let's look at what Amos Oz says in his most recent book, The Slopes of Lebanon. He asks to me, even though I am no great admirer of Amos Oz, he asks to me a reasonable question. What does Israel, the fourth ranking military power in the world, have to fear from a state that would be one fifth the size of Albania and one half the population of Kuwait? Is that a real threat to the state of Israel? Or is that simply an excuse to continue the occupation? Israel faces as much of a military threat from the Palestinian state as the United States did from Grenada. Now, surely, surely Ronald Reagan, or perhaps Ronald Reagan, believed that Grenada posed a major security threat to the United States, exactly as George Bush two weeks ago again affirmed that Nicaragua poses a major national security threat to the United States. Nicaragua, which has to its credit two escalators and one elevator, poses, <laughs> poses a national security threat to the United States. It seems to me applying the same standards as Abe Aden uses and Amos Oz uses, we have to dismiss this totally spurious notion that Israel is maintaining its occupation of the West Bank and Gaza for security reasons. It has very good reasons to maintain the occupation, but I'm afraid to say they have precious little to do with security.